The bright helpings of Mead and the Shrope's song are interrupted when Unferth challenges Beowulf's strength and reputation. The poet tells us that Unferth, whose name means Mar Peace in Anglo-Saxon, is motivated by envy. He can't stand that anyone should have more acclaim than he does, line 502. This is a dangerous sin in the Comitatus, the type of sin that can rip apart the community with faction and bitterness. From the very beginning of this episode, the poet makes it clear that Unferth is a serious threat. Unferth accuses Beowulf of weakness because he once lost a swimming match to someone named Brecca when, he, when Beowulf was younger. He adds that Beowulf is motivated by sheer vanity, line, one, line 509, and so Unferth reads his own sin of envy into Beowulf's actions. Beowulf confesses that he did lose the swimming match, but only because he was fully armored, swimming through a storm, and fighting off numerous sea monsters all at once, one of whom dragged him to the ocean floor before he finished it off by filling its belly with steel. So yes, Beowulf says, Brecca returned to shore sooner, but I swam out farther, fought harder, and made the ocean a bit safer for mariners. Beowulf, having defended himself against, against Unferth's charges, then goes on the offensive. He reminds Unferth that he has no noble deeds to honor his own name. Rather, he has brought a curse on his own name by killing his own kith and kin, a damnable sin that puts Unferth in the company of Cain and his monstrous brood. Beowulf then asks why Unferth hasn't done anything about Grendel yet. If Unferth is so concerned about heroics and bravery, why is Grendel still ravaging Heorot? This episode with Unferth functions as character development for Beowulf. It is essentially Beowulf's resume. It shows that he's a proven monster killer and he's ready to fight he's ready to face Grendel. But it also creates another parallel between Beowulf and Christ. Unferth is a pharisaical hypocrite, challenging Beowulf's authority as monster slayer. By whose authority do you say these things? Unferth is saying to Beowulf. How can you say you're a monster killer? Beowulf responds not with swords, but with words. He uses Unferth's challenge as an opportunity to further demonstrate his prowess as a fighter, but also to unveil Unferth's own hypocrisy and envy. Christ did much the same thing when the Pharisees challenged his authority. Beowulf's response to Unferth gladdens Hrothgar's heart, and the Danes sit down to feast. Huelthiau, the Danish queen, enters the hall and performs the ritual ceremony of the peace weaver by offering drinks of mead to all the warriors in order of rank, beginning with Hrothgar. When Huelthiau welcomes Beowulf, he repeats his boast to kill Grendel, this time sealed formally with the mead cup. When the feast is finally underway, we see that Beowulf, even though he hasn't been there for more than 24 hours, he's already begun to end Grendel's tyranny. Line 642, the poet says, Then it was like old times in the echoing hall, proud talk and the people happy, loud and excited. Hope has returned to Heorot for the first time in twelve winters. The warrior from across the sea has come to proclaim good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, as St. Luke says in his Gospel of Jesus in chapter 4. When Jesus began his ministry in the Gospel of Luke, he told the people the good news of deliverance, defended his authority by revealing Israel's hypocrisy, and then cast a demon out of a man. Beowulf is going to do all of these things as well. And now he waits to cleanse the meat hall of the demon spawn that haunts it.